Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As you'll notice, uh, Attorney McLean is not here tonight. Uh, he is excused. He, he wasn't able to make it tonight. Before we start the meeting, I would ask Madam City Clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. For every minute you remain angry, you give up 60 seconds of peace of mind. Call the 23rd regular, uh, 23rd mm -hmm. regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Would you please call the roll? Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Excuse. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Excuse. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemeyer. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Excuse. And Verhasselt. Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. This time it's, uh, we will pledge allegiance to this beautiful country we live in. Alderman Hannah, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes be approved. Is that it on the record? Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, public forum this evening. We have Dimple Adams. Can I have your home address, please? 1424 Virginia Avenue, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. So can you let me know when I'm about four minutes? Certainly. Thank you. Um, good evening, I'm Mayor Perez and um, City Clerk Sue Richards and Council. It's nice to be with you tonight. Uh, I'm here because I'm a taxpayer and citizen of Sheboygan and have been um, for the last 19 years living in District 3. And the reason that I'm here is I, I attended the um, um, salaries and grievance meetings the last um, two or three times, and <clears throat> I wanted to speak about the table of organization um, that was discussed this past week, which I think it's a good idea. First of all, I'd like to say that as a taxpayer, as I've been out talking to people and talking to department heads and talking to city workers and so forth, there isn't anyone that I don't know that doesn't want us to have lower taxes. So, you know, we're all on the same wavelength and thinking about that, that everybody wants lower taxes or our taxes not to be raised. I know myself as a senior citizen on a fixed income, I can't afford for my taxes to be raised any more than what they already have been. And even though um, part of my tax bill is from the city, I think I also need to you know, be talking to the county and to the school board about that too because it is a three-way tax bill along with the state and others, but those are the three main slices of the pie. So, you know, let's, let's all be straight about that that everybody wants lower taxes. Now, how are we gonna get there? And, and this table of organization, as I said in the salary and grievance meeting the last week and the week and two weeks before that, I was at that meeting also, <clears throat> I'm seeing what I think is a rush job to uh, reorganize and, and, and to change the structure of the city employees. And I don't, have, I don't think there's anybody that has a problem with the table of organization being looked at. I think that's important. I think that we need to do that. I think that anything that we can do to, to save money and talk to the employees and talk to the department heads, 
But what I saw this past week was something that wasn't done. And that was department heads were not aware of what that table was going to be before they got to that meeting. And they were not given a copy of what it was going to be before they got to that meeting. And they weren't given a copy at the meeting. Uh, when a couple of the department heads spoke, they had to get a copy from the alder persons themselves that were on the committee. And um, <clears throat> I saw department heads speak. I saw city employees speak. I saw them speak passionately about their concerns and that this had not been done with them. And then I saw them, um, I saw this one lady crying uh, from the computer department because there's six employees from the computer department and uh, with this package that was to go through, uh, they were going to be cutting the computer department employees in half. So, you know, a 50% is quite a cut. And when this lady was saying that they were working very hard and that they had been taking up the slack from this one that had been on sick leave for the last six weeks, instead of saying thank you for working extra hard for taking up the slack on the sick leave, sick leave for the one that was absent, they were told, well, that's another way of saying that we can do without less employees because you've worked so efficiently without them. And see, I think it's a two-way street. Everybody wants to get... A little after four minutes already. Thank you. From A to B. But how we get there. And then I saw a department head speak up and then later learned that he was reprimanded for speaking up. I saw citizens that were not allowed to speak at this committee meeting. These are committee meetings. So if we can't do it at committee meetings, where can we do it? If department heads aren't allowed to speak and citizens aren't allowed to speak without fear of uh, being you know, reprimanded, then we've got a serious problem, I think. And um, now I'm very pleased that this table of organization is coming to you tonight as a report. Excuse me. And it's going to go. One minute. Would you like the additional minute? One more second. One okay. more minute. It's going to go to all of the standing committees. So all of you are going to have time to tweak it. And another thing that bothered me about the table of organization was that it all had to be accepted or none. Well, I don't think that that's the way that it has to be. I think that you guys can take the time to tweak it and, and work with it and take the time to talk to the department heads and the employees and come up with a good, solid table of organization that will save us money. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That's Thank it. you, Madam C. Clerk. There is a point of clarification that needs to be made tonight, and that is that at the salary and grievance meeting that was held, no one was trying to prevent anybody from speaking. But there are standards of propriety, standards of respect, and collegialness that we all must follow. When the committee, a standing committee, elected by the people, when their discussion is referred to as pathetic, I will step in. When their discussion is called ridiculous to their face, I will step in. Anybody can say and is free to say anything they'd like, so long as they adhere to civility, cordial discourse, and utmost respect for the people that have been elected by the people of the city of Sheboygan. People may not like what they hear. There's a way to address it. If it's not addressed properly, folks, I've said it once and I'm gonna keep saying it, I will step in. I wanted to share some thoughts with you about the city administration. It's an issue that came about as I was at a grocery store this weekend. And I was cornered by the vegetable section and the question that was posed to me was, why are you 
And why is the council anti-police? Well, that question struck, struck a chord. It really did, because that's been the issue lately, and that's been some of the accusations that are being made out in the community. And I wanted to clear some of that ground for you. The alderman and I have an extremely difficult job to do. And as we strive to do our job the best we can with the information that we can, do the analysis that we need to do, and perhaps at some point come to terms or some general consensus, if not a majority vote, we make decisions. Some decisions are popular, some are not. But this body and my office, we make decisions every single day. And folks, those decisions impact people's lives in one way or another. And as we make those decisions, we have to weigh and balance a lot of concerns a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. We do the best we can. We work as a team, and to me, team is contributing. We all contribute in some respect or another. Some a little more, some a little less. We have to keep our eye on the big picture. It's so easy to get ill-focused and get personal and focus on one thing instead of the whole picture. But we have to be mindful, and I've said it before, that the decisions we make, regardless of what we base them on, impact people's lives. They don't impact just your district, because when you vote, you vote in majority. They impact everybody's lives in the entire city of Sheboygan. So while you're elected by the people in one district or one ward, you're impacting everybody. Taxpayer pay for, they expect, and they deserve basic services. That's what we do. We provide those services in an efficient, cost-effective, consistent, and timely basis. That's what we do, folks. This structure, the government structure we have now is extremely complex and diverse. We have several departments. We don't have one department. Some of us may like to pick one department as our best, and perhaps promote that department, that's okay. But keep in mind, we don't represent one department. We represent a lot of departments. Unlike department heads, they represent one department, not a lot of departments. My philosophy has been I will treat every department fairly and equal equally. I will not have favorites. And if I'm at fault, then I'm at fault. But I believe that strongly, and I believe the people of Sheboygan want me to feel that way. The minute I take preference to one, the inevitable thing is I will neglect the other. I will not have that on my conscience. Our problems are mainly attributed to rising costs and the people's pleas for no more taxes. Every year, you have seen that our expenditures far exceed our revenues. Then we have to make decisions. Nothing different than at home. When you have more expenses than money coming in, you're going to have to make some cuts or some considerations to make up that difference. But as I said earlier, this discussion here with you was prompted by me being quartered in the vegetable section and the accusation that this council and that I am anti-police this accusation obviously is unfounded, and it's beyond me, and it continues to be beyond me, how some people can be so ugly, disrespectful, <coughs> mean-spirited, and divisiveness. But they're out there, folks. And not they're out here in Sheboygan. They're out there all over the world. We just happen to have some ourselves. Some of the accusations are very politically charged with high emotions and personal feelings. You hear misinformation out in the community about how this administration and this mayor cut, funding, cut the funding for a child abuse program in the police department. That hasn't happened. Have we cut this? Have we cut that? What we've cut is no secret, folks. And what we've cut is in response to the people's pleas for tax relief. We continue to work towards tax relief. Now, there's some key things that I think you need to know and the public needs to know 
about why it is that we're not anti-police. Because if we were anti-police, the first thing we'd do is we'd look at their budget. Oh, the mayor's cutting this budget, and the council agreed, and they've cut the budget. One third of our entire city budget, general budget, goes to the police. One third to one department. The rest goes to the other departments. The increases in the budget starting at 2003 have been 4.6, 2.7, 7.0, 2.4 increases in the budget for the police department. That's not a trend of being anti-police, folks. In 06, there was a decrease of 0 0.7, and that was because the council elected to have a 0% increase in the levy and everybody took a hit then. Now another argument that's being made that we're anti-police is we're down seven officers. In 2002, we had 90 sworn officers. In 2003, we had 87. In 2004, we had 88. In 2005, we had 86. In 2007, we had 87. The total difference in five years, folks, has been three, three officers. I got these numbers from finance and HR. Three officers, and that has been because when we had to make the difference up in the police department to comply with this council's request of 0% increase, decisions had to be made. And when an officer is missing, they delay the hiring so that that money can be used to make up the differences elsewhere. It's strictly a management department head decision. And that was made by that department head. The other thing that we could look at, if we're anti, we pay them poorly. My salary, and I will announce it to the public because it's public information, is 65809 That's what I make a year. More than 50 people in the city of Sheboygan working for the city make more money than I do. More than 50 people make more money than I do. And I worry about all the departments and get blamed for all the departments. About half of those 50 people work for the police department. Of those, more than half, of, of, of those more than 50, about half of them make more salary than I do in just that department. 22 people in the police department earn more than I do with a difference of 5 to 44% higher than I do. We pay well. 11 of those 22 people are in the 20 to mid 30% making more money than I do, higher. And this does not include the increase in salary of 3% more for this year, 2007. A new police officer earns benefits and wages 41,721 with an additional 3% of about $1,200 in 07. We fund our police department well, and we pay them well. And there's other issues that I've talked to you about, about how we are supportive of our police department and how we are not anti-police department. We could go on and on and on. But the biggest one is that for about 50 years, they've needed a police station. And you, council, have made it happen. They're going to get one. If you were anti-police, you wouldn't have voted for it. And you wouldn't have decided to build a police station. If you hear the accusations that are being made, which is what I, when I hear them, I would ask that you assess the information. Consider the source. And then refer them to the mayor's office. Or if you need information, it's easily available. And along that same line, that this council is anti-police, comes the accusation that this council is divided. Folks, you're not divided. If anything, you're pretty strong. You've got some great talent, diverse skills, dedication I've never seen before. You work hard for very little money. You take a lot, a lot of beating, because I remember when I was an alderman, 
calls came in any time of the day and they stop you anywhere they can and that's okay, that's our job, but you're not divided. This is not a divided council. Someone made the comment that we're having a hard time trying to get you to sign documents because you're talking amongst yourselves. I've never seen that happen before. You're actually conversing with each other before the meetings. That's pretty awesome. Do you remember when we talked about if this council was divided, you wouldn't have passed a 0% levy. You wouldn't have put an end to the wheel tax. You wouldn't have put an end to the stormwater tax. You wouldn't have given the people over $8 million in tax relief that they don't have to budget for this year because you took care of that. You did away with about a little over $8 million. If you were a divided council, you wouldn't have had in just the city in the, in the, um, in the river, uh, the development part of the city by South Pier, you wouldn't have developed over $56 million in additional tax base. You're not divided. You're pretty united. Some people would like to have people think that, but that's not true. And it's been said that a lot of this is politics. The same people claiming it's politics are the same ones trying to make it politics. All I see here is hardworking aldermen who come in, do their homework, study the issues, and vote their conscience. That's a good, old, that's a good counsel to me. And finally, along the lines, if we're anti-police, We'd have a, one heck of a problem in public safety, and folks, we don't. At the salary and grievance meeting, <clears throat> Chief Kirk said, we don't have a dangerous community. We don't have a dangerous community. He asked, do we have dangerous situations? Yes. Are there problems out there? Yes. But he said, I take pride in being the sixth safest city in the nation. Folks, I take pride too, and I think rightfully so. You should too. We have a good city council. We have a good city administration. We have great support for our public safety departments. And saying we don't is not going to change the picture. We're going to continue to do what we do best, and that's serve the public and serve them well. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is hearings. We have nine hearings. The first one, I am going to cancel. The City Planning Commission has not acted on the rezoning. And then we have a hearing on notice of the vacation and discontinuance of approximately 20 feet of South Pier Drive from east right of ways of South 8th Street to Illinois Avenue. We have a hearing on the proposed assessments of resurfacing for resurfacing of South 7th Street from Indiana Avenue to High Avenue, of North 7th Street from Geely to North Avenue, of North 3rd Street from Bluff to North Avenue, of Lincoln Avenue from North 8th to North 13th, of North 13th Street from Merners Avenue to Geely, of Niagara Avenue from North 4th to North 6, and we have proposed assessments for curb and gutter on Salmon Avenue from North 15th Street to North 21st Street. Is there anyone that would like to address the council on any of these hearings? Okay, we will take you, ma'am, and then you, sir. Please step up. And we just need your name, address, and the area that you're going to be talking about. Sure, right up to the mic would Please. be fine. Which hearing are you speaking on, ma'am? Pardon me? Which area are you speaking on? Which hearing? The one... Third Street between uh, Bluff and... Bluff and North Avenue? North Avenue. Okay, and I just need your name. Marion Rusink, and I live at 2028 North Third Street. Marion, could you spell your last name for me, please? R U E S as in Sam I N K. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2028 is the house right next to the alley, adjacent, well, across from the First Congregational Church. 
you got the picture there. And the problem is that uh, when cars approach, or not cars, but trucks approach from the north, they cannot turn into that alley, apparently, without going over the lawn at my house. It really hasn't bothered me a lot. But now that all the surface resurfacing is coming up, I thought it might be a good idea if that entrance was redesigned somehow. And if you recall, uh, I took pictures on Wednesday, and it was after the snowstorm that we had a week ago Sunday. And I think you'll be, I was hoping there was a overhead projector gathering <laughs> dust somewhere. <laughs> but if you just pass those and, and look at the Thank you, truck man. tracks. And in the winter, the snow is there, and that's not a big deal. But in the summertime, it packs that ground down so that the lawn gets to be three, four, five, six inches below the curbing because it's a continuous turning over that corner. And I'd like to address another Please do. while I have the point. Please okay. do. Then the other thing I took pictures of, I watch a lot of court cases. <laughs> <laughs> this is my evidence. Uh, when we built our house 50 years ago, the snow plowing was always done to the center onto the boulevards. I don't know why they, somebody thought that was not a good idea because now people that have driveways on the boulevards have to shovel out their driveways. And I'm sure you've all heard people complain about plows going past and plowing their driveway closed. But that too, this just shows what happened to my sidewalk after the snow clouds went through. And as long as I was coming tonight and taking the pictures, I decided that I'd like to address that problem also because I'm very fortunate to have the church. They do all the plowing. They do all the plowing of the alley. They plow the drive, the entrance or exit to the alley. So it's not a problem for me, but people that live up the street further, I think they do have that problem. And it presents a problem even on my sidewalk. I have it shoveled and then the snowplow goes through and it throws it right back, as you see on the picture, right back on the sidewalk because it, that portion is very narrow. So couldn't somebody start redesigning the plowing system and plow it back onto the boulevard? Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just for the public's uh, information, notes will be taken of your comments, and they will be taken into consideration. Thank you. Next, sir, you're up. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Which one are you talking on? I'm, I'm, I'm here to be heard uh, with regard to what's listed as hearing four proposed assessments for resurfacing of North 7th Street from Geely Avenue to North Avenue. Oh, okay, hold on. North 7th from Geely to North. Yes. Oh, name, name and can, can I have your name, please? Uh, my name is Jay Persick, P as in Peter, E-R-S as in Sam, I-C-K. And Jay, your home address? Uh, 2216 North 7th Street. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would just, uh, I, I just came to uh, urge the uh, council to um, uh, vote not to confirm the assessment to resurface um, North 7th Street and to replace curb and gutter on North 7th Street from Geely to North Avenue. Uh, at the very least, I would uh, ask that the uh, council postpone the assessment 
um, for a few years to allow property owners to save the money for the portion they'll have to pay. Um, residents will have to come up with two, three, or more thousand dollars for a bill that will be due. I'm not sure when, six months, 12 months, tw 20 months at the, at the most, I gather. And I acknowledge that the city offers the five-year financing. Uh, I just think it would be who the city to encourage us to be responsible consumers and save up for the work rather than to go in debt and pay interest on it for five years. And of course, I know we need to pay for city infrastructure. It's just we need to be mindful of priorities. And um, as far as the, the residents I've spoken to, including myself, there are a lot um, higher things on our list than uh, spending two to anywhere two to forty-five hundred for some of us uh, than making our street and our curb look prettier at this time when I just don't think it's a high priority. It, it's really not that bad. Um, and then the city, I understand. I gather they have to pay for fifty percent of the of the project as well. And even if that money is already allocated, I would just hope the city recognizes that it has high priorities. Um, the mayor mentioned having to cut back on a number of things, and I know one city street is a, is a pittance in the, in the amount of money it needs, but I would just hope that there would be a way to allot this for a few years to some, something else that much higher priority things, the police, health care costs for city employees. It's just hard to believe that this money is not urgently needed for other things um, than just making our street prettier and um, that it, it can't any longer be diverted, even though it may be allocated. Uh, finally, I just would, again, just reiterate that I would I hope that you would allow um, the citizens to spend their money, our, the money that we have to contribute as frontage owners, uh, to more important things, and uh, to do the same for the, the money that all taxpayers that you've collected from us, and to just wait to resurface this section until it's really a high priority, until it's really needed, um, and at the very least defer the project for a few years to allow everyone to save and, and prepare for the expense. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? Ma'am, please. <laughs> and then you're, you're next, sir. And which one are you talking about? Uh, the same one. The same one, the Geely north to 7 north from Geely to north. And can I have your name, please? Joyce Fritz. And Joyce, what is your home address? 2522 North 7th Street. OK, go ahead. OK. Um, I must agree with the person who just spoke, and I hadn't intended to make that request, but if that's possible, that would be great to have it procrastinated for a while. But in case if it does go through, um, we were wondering several things. That's a long block. Uh, each of those two blocks are equal to three <coughs> blocks each. So we are wondering, where will we park? How long will the project take, and when will it begin? And then will both sides of the boulevard be done at the same time, or will you say do the west side first and then the east or vice versa? Those were the questions we had. <clears throat> and then also I would like to address what the lady next to me said that was on 3rd Street about the snow plowing. It used to be really good. It made the streets wider, the boulevard wider, when they plowed and it went onto the boulevard. Now that they, they do it just like they're doing any other street, it... If there's a lot of snow, it really narrows the boulevard, the, the street, the traffic um, on that one side. Sometimes when we have lots of snow, there's not even allowing allowed parking. Uh, no, that's because it's microphone here. <laughs> um, uh, it it um, makes it that you can't even park safely and have traffic go past. So I hadn't intended to bring that one up either, but I just capitalized on what she said. Thank you. So thank you, Joyce. And which one are you speaking on, sir? I'm on uh, speaking on uh, South 7th Street from Indiana on up. Okay, hold on. South 7th. Indiana to High Avenue? That's the it. Indiana to High Avenue on South 7th? I believe so. Okay, and what is your name, please? George Huffman. It's H-O-F-F-M-A-N or two? Two N's. Okay, and your address? Uh, well, the property I'm, I'm referring to is 1106 South 7th. South 7th. Okay, go ahead. And uh, what we're concerned about there is that um, there's an awful lot of 
uh, commercial traffic. There's a lot of trucks coming down 7th Street now, and I'm wondering if it's wise to be resurfacing that at this time. And since that uh, roundabout thing went in on 8th Street, we got a truck route on South 7th now, and some very big ones and heavy ones, and I don't know if we should be investing that kind of uh, investment in something that may be torn up in a short while because there's a lot of building going on on 7th Street. There's a lot of condos. There's a lot of garbage being hauled out of there, and there's a lot in the future planned yet. I think that's a little premature to be doing that work. The other thing I probably uh, hope you don't throw me out, but uh, I think I, I was wondering if the... Well, council didn't make a mistake, and that assessment was put on last year's taxes already. Because uh, our little 800-square-foot uh, condo there uh, went up $750 along with the others. Secondly, we don't have garbage pickup. That cost us $156 for the 11 units there every three months. And... I think it's kind of unfair because those are residences and they're owned by individual people. And not only that, but we only have five cans of garbage. Uh, and that's a, that's a tremendous extra load for us along with the tax increase we've had. These were surprises. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, George. Sir. Thank you. Hi, and which one are you speaking on, sir? Uh, the same uh, number three, Indiana Mr. to Highland. Okay, and can I have your name? Certainly, it's William. William. Last name is spelled S C H W O C H E R T. W O C H E R T? Correct. Okay, and your home address, William? 1106. 1106. South 7th. Okay, go ahead. Units in the same building. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for coming unprepared. I just came to listen to see what was going on here tonight. But in um, actually picking up your agenda, something popped out to me, and I would like clarification on this and something else in the letter that we received about the cost for the repay. The first thing that comes to my mind is um, on, the, on the letter, it mentions um, resurfacing curb and gutter, resurfacing plus curb and gutter. But in your agenda, it only specifies resurfacing. And I noticed down in one of the other areas, it uh, specifies um, resurfacing and curb and gutter. So I'm wondering if my letter is correct that they're doing curb and resurfacing or just the resurfacing because the price is quite a bit different. So I'd, I'd like clarification on that, if I could. Do you need it? Because that will be noted down, and people can get back to you tomorrow so we can proceed with this. Thank you. All your comments are going to be noted down. We've got city engineer writing notes right now. Okay, thank and you. And this is recorded, too, so. All right. Um, and then furthermore, with my um, letter for assessment, clarification on it, um, it mentions the point one, the city ordinance will um, cover half of the cost. Now, is that half of the cost, and this is my half of the cost, or is it half of the cost from this amount? We'll answer that, too. Otherwise, we're going to be back and forth. But we'll, we'll get the answers to you, sir, for, for those questions, okay? And that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, you're next. And which one would you like to speak on, sir? On uh, Niagara Avenue between 6th and or, uh, 4th and 6th Street. Okay, hold on. Between 4th and 6th, okay. And your name, please. Uh, Gustav Fister. Gustav? Yeah, G-U-S-T-A-V. And P-H-P-F? I-S-T-E-R. And your home address? Uh, 845 North 6th Street. And that's my... I own that house. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. <clears throat> the question I have is that 
Right now, they're in the process of building this new, uh, where the condominiums on 6th Street. And you have, I don't know how many workers there, but you have about, maybe about 40, 50. And they park down on 6th Street. They park on, I'm not 6th Street, but on Niagara, Niagara Avenue between 6th and 5th, also on Washington Court. Now, if they start doing this resurfacing, you know, let's say, I don't want to start this, let's just say it's, let's say April or May, I mean, they're going, that's going to be a mess because where are they, where are they going to, where are the people going to park? So is there any way that they could start that, I guess I don't know when, but they could start that after this place is completed? That's something we can look at, sir, yes. And it's being noted now. Okay, so, okay. thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Is there anyone else that would like? Yes, sir. Please, please. <laughs> it's a long way, but. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. And which one are you looking to talk uh, on? Number three, number 7th Street, Indiana to high. Indiana to high. Okay, and your name, please. Fred Benke, B-E-H-N-K-E. -E. And your address. That there is what's 1120. 1120 South 7. Okay, go we ahead. Had, we had just bought that building, That's and I was kind of, one question, I, I don't get out of work till 5, so it's hard for me to get to the, to the city to talk to these people. When did they decide on doing this? We bought this property in, in November or October, and uh, then there was no special assessments. All of a sudden, now there's a, a seven thousand dollar assessment there. So I was kind of wondering, is, is there somebody that I can talk to that? Well, there is, but it, we don't. We, the way we conduct the hearings is we allow you to provide input, and then someone will get back to you with okay. a specific re response to you. Okay, and okay. that's being noted. Okay, that's great. And uh, the other thing, when they say resurfacing, the, the road that's good, they, they tear the whole thing up. Do they? Is that what they do? They just start from. From uh, Indiana Avenue all the way to the the High Avenue, and we'll answer that one for you too. Okay, okay. is that That's it? it? Okay. Shall we see you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else, President Burke? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearings be closed. Second. Motion second to close hearings under discussion. <clears throat> There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Consent agenda, we will refer back to, refer to Planning Commission 23-1. And the consent agenda is from 23-2 to 23-26. President Burke. Uh, thank you again, Your Honor. I would move to uh, accept and file all the ROs, accept and adopt the RCs, pass the resolutions and the general ordinances. Motion and second. Under discussion. President Burke? Uh, yes, if I could, I would uh, move to refer 235 through 2313. These are all the matters that refer to resurfacing uh, streets that were addressed uh, in the hearings. I would move to refer those documents back to the Public Works Committee. Second. Excuse me. Mayor, could, could you please leave out 236 because that's a different issue. Okay, with the, correct, with Thank the exception you. of 23 six. Thank you. Five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes. Everybody got that? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, yes, thank you again, Your Honor. Uh, I think this is the first time we've uh, reinstituted a resurfacing program in our streets for several years. And I trust of the 200 or some letters that went out, uh, this, was, this has been a, an area where there have been a number of questions, I think, uh, I, I shouldn't say I received. My wife, Fran, responded to about 10 calls, and I've got a couple of emails, and there's a letter contained in our package that addresses the many issues. I think this is a matter that, rather than having a hearing when we listen to people, this requires a dialogue. And I think this requires the opportunity for people to, to interact with city staff uh, and get answers to their questions, because the, the answer to one question usually brings another question. So for that purpose, I would recommend uh, referring this back to our Public Works Committee so that 
the interested parties can convene with Public Works and hopefully come to some resolution on this. And I believe uh, the Public Works Committee meets Thursday at 4 p.m. And so that's common. I would ask the uh, Chair of City of Public Works to ask someone at Public Works Department to send all of these individuals that spoke tonight a letter inviting them. Some of the concerns that were expressed tonight are, 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 are good, and I think they, they, they merit further discussion in committee, and hopefully it'll make our letter that goes out better and clearer for our citizens. So thank you very much. Any discussion, further discussion on that? <coughs> then the motion is to refer 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 back to Public Works. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We will now take a vote on 23.2 through 23.26 with the exceptions of the ones who just voted. Any discussion on any of those? Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Verhasselt? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions? 2327 to 2330 to be referred. Report of officers to 2331 lies over to April 4th. Document withdrawn. 2332 has been withdrawn. 2334 and 33 will be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 2335 lies over. 2336 through 2341 to be referred. Report of Committee 8, 2342, Finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and, and adopted and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 2343 and 2344 lies over. 2345 and 46 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2045, resolution number 2210607 by Alderman Ryan and Susha vacating the north approximately 20 feet of South Pier Drive from east right away of South 8th Street to Illinois. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and Second, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Warren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 2243 and 2244. Alderman Graf, would you like to take both? Yes, Your Honor. I would move that both those resolutions be put upon their passage. There's a motion and second, and both of those uh, or, uh, resolutions pertain to a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2252, General Ordinance Number 890607 by Alderman Radke, Ryan, Berg, Boren, and Verhassel, repealing and recreating various sections of Chapter 50, Fire Protection of the Municipal Code. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Serta, and Graf. Aye. 
13 ayes. Motion carries. 2262, General Ordinance Number 900607 by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny amending the municipal code so as to change the job description and job codes of the part-time municipal court deputy clerk and part-time municipal court assistant deputy clerk, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. 2263, general ordinance number 910607. By Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny amending the municipal code so as to change the job description and job code of the city assessor. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I, in looking over this job description for the uh, new city assessor, I notice there's quite a few things that are underscored. Are those the changes that are being proposed to upgrade those qualifications if somebody could uh, yes I will ask uh, Mr. to please step up department head yeah thank you Your Honor. yes yes they are changes are basically minor changes but uh, the uh, actually Marie uh, Ellis who has left us went through and kind of brought up to date so okay thank you <coughs> thank you uh, Mr. Shirk any other questions? There being none, please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 2266, General Ordinance Number 920607 by Alderman Vanderweel. Serta, Meyer, Montemayor, and Berg relating to stop signs so as to add stop signs on Bluff Avenue and North 4th for east and westbound traffic. Alderman Vanderwill is not here. Pre Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Would Sorry. you like to take both? Sure, I'll take 2267 and ask too that that general ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there a second to that? Second. 2266 and 2267. Under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think the stop sign that was going on uh, the 4th Street is going to help a lot. It was yield previously, and yield often means I'll take a look maybe. And I think this will help. Thank you. Thank you very well. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? And Manny, 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 2347 will be referred to finance. 2349 will be referred to public protection and safety, public works, finance, law and licensing, and salaries and grievances. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 2349 is an RO by the city clerk committing a communication from all the persons Vanderbilt along with the noise electronic over city auctions on lot of items. That will be referred to public protection and safety and public works. 2350 is a communication from Glenn Killing submitting his proposals for visitor signage for the city of Sheboygan. And that will be referred to the Tourism Advisory Committee and Public Works. 2351 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. That will be referred to law and licensing. 2352 is a communication from Karen Hendricks and Bauer questioning the purpose of a parking limit in front of her house. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 2353 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Jeffrey Tauschik, Chief of Police of the Plymouth Police Department, stating his concerns with the proposal from the City Salary and Grievance Committee to eliminate three of the six information systems personnel at the elimination of these positions would be detrimental to their operations and seriously delay response time for technical assistance in reference to the Intergovernmental Cooperation Agreement for Technical Support Services between the City of Sheboygan and the City of Plymouth. 
That will be referred to all those standing committees of finance, salary and grievance, public protection and safety, public works, law and licensing. 2354 is a communication from Jennifer Mills, president of Blue Water Commons Condo Association, stating concerns regarding the planned repair of South 7th Street in Chavoy. That will go to public works. 2355, the communication from Herbert Humphrey III, stating his concerns that the most special assessment he received for by two ministry services. That will go to public works. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. Stand adjourned.